Hey, this is Mike from the Graphic Novel Show. Are you interested in starting and running your own podcast? Well, you know, this is the second one that we've done. We used to do a different one, and we decided to start this one. And last time we used Anchor, and you know what? We decided to go back with Anchor again because they are the easiest way to make a podcast. They give you everything you need in one place for free. You can do it right from your phone or on your computer. Anchor gives you creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. You can do that right from your phone. That's quite amazing. They'll also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can easily make money from your, po- uh, from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Now, what you need to do is go download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hi, I'm Parker. And I'm Mike. And And this this is is the Graphic Graphic Novel Novel Podcast. Podcast. Welcome to our new podcast on the art of the graphic novel. Mike is the author of 10 books and produced Comics TV, which was a weekly TV show on comics for seven years back in the 90s. Back in the olden days. (laughs) uh, Together, we produced Northwest Brew Talk about the beer industry in the Northwest for two years. Now we're back, and this show is all about graphic novels. Hi, I'm Parker. And I'm Mike. How's it going this week? It's going. Yeah, is it going? Where's it going? I don't know. You never know. No, you don't? You don't know where it's going? No. My week started out really good with some good medical news. Yeah, and... uh... Now it's just kind of floating along. Yeah. The week actually went by pretty fast. Mine started out well, too. I felt sick. Yeah. You didn't come down with anything, though. No. It was like a one-day kind of cold thing. That happened the last time the kids got sick. Remember? Yeah. My body is fighting it off. I think that's what it is. You just have that strong immune system. Yeah. Apparently. It's good. But because of that, we pushed our show to the latest possible date. We did that last yeah, week too. Yeah, you're like too. we're gonna we're recording to we're recording today as soon as I get home. That was like two days ago. Then you came home and you're like, oh, I don't feel like it. Yeah, yeah, and it's no. hard. It is. Anyhow, I'm really tired. Yes, that's how you know the difference between uh, uh, um, I don't remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> Nighttime and morning time recording. No, I just like I will just push through and and record you when I'm tired. And you're like, no, I'm I'm gonna sleep. Yeah, because I won't, I won't be good. So I want it to be a, a, a somewhat entertaining. For, it's okay if I'm not good. I'm just for the... our fans. Oh no, you're you're good. You're <laughs> laughing. You're laughing at it. You're good. You'll be fine. <clears throat> um, but Black History Month last week we had a, a great book and yeah. a good response. Uh, a lot of people listened to that episode, which is good. Thank you for listening. We yes, appreciate you. Definitely appreciate it. And we've got uh, some more great stuff today. Yes. Um, also wanted to mention that uh, next month uh, we will be, I know we mentioned it before, but we will be attending Emerald City Comic Con. We'll be down there on March 12th. I think it runs the 11th through the 15th, I'm pretty sure. Or is it? I think it's the 12th, 12th through, the through the 15th. 15th. Yeah. yeah. Thursday through Sunday. Uh, we'll be there on Thursday all day long. Having a good time. It's our first time going, too, so that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. And it's the biggest con that I've ever been to. I mean, I, we yeah. went to the Buffalo Comic Con, and that was... No, that's not even close. Tiny. That's I mean, close. it wasn't tiny, but it was small. Yeah, it's nothing so, like this. So, I'm excited. I've been to some We went ones. to one up in... Bellingham. Bellingham. Didn't, did we go to Bellingham It was a good Con? size, but again, it was still small. Yeah. Yes. We saw the little child that was... I mean, not little child, but they were probably a tween, dressed as Louise. Oh, yeah, yeah. And our oldest was like, look, it's Louise. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah we, uh, but back in the day when uh, comics were huge back in the 90s and uh, Steve and I did comics TV, I, let's see, we went to a con in Philadelphia. We went, oh, that was a big one. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was a long day. We, we drove down to Philadelphia. We did the con. Oh, you drove? And then we drove over to, to Atlantic City, walked the boardwalk. And oh then God. got in the car and drove home. Um, Wait, in one day you did all this? 
we were I was up for 24 hours. Oh. It was a long day. Who drove? I think I drove because it was my car. Oh my god. <laughs> but uh That was so responsible of you. It was. And then I also let's see I did the Chicago Con which uh I, it might have been newer back then, but it's a pretty big one now. Smaller. I think okay. they've changed the name of it, but it sounds like one that uh, a lot of people go to now they like it. Um but it was a big one back then too. Yeah. Uh so we did we did some big ones back then. Uh, it's pretty cool seeing the giant booths that uh, some of these companies have and stuff. And yeah. This was when Image was new and Todd McFarlane and, and all those characters that they created were, the 90s. were, were brand new. And it was pretty cool. Yeah. Long lines for people, you know. Um, but yeah. I would imagine we can expect the same. I'm thinking so, yeah. 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 Um, so let's see. Let's start out with uh, with some news. In collaboration with Dynamite, Christopher Priest is celebrating Black History Month and paying tribute to the contributions of creators of color on his Vampirilla run. As Christopher Priest's acclaimed run on Vampirilla has continued on, the veteran writer and editor is constantly working closely with Dynamite, brewing new ideas to engage the comic book community of fans, retailers, and press. For Vampirilla, uh, number eight that comes out this month, Priest thought of a symbolic way to pay tribute to an under-recognized and underutilized portion of creators and fans. Quote, it is a significant and unique gesture on Dynamite's part to work with me to acknowledge the contributions of African-American artists in this industry with a set of covers exclusively developed by artists of color. Wow. Unquote. Um, oh, he also says, both my veteran buddies and inspiring Boundary Breakers create uh, creating their own unique expressions are favorite vampire, vampire, vampire. I guess it's vampire. Priest and editor Mark Idelson carefully assembled a team comprised of Dennis Cowan, Aletha Martinez, Mark Beecham, and Afua Richardson to contri uh, contribute covers inspired by a simple premise. They were asked to imagine creating the daughter of Draculon back in 1969 as if her appearance was inspired by African-American women rather than the Betty Page and Barbarella vein that James Warren, Forrest J. Ackerman, and Frank Frazetta and Tina, Trina Robbins ended up tapping into. They are also joined by returning cosplayer Mai. So the covers are very cool. Take a look at that. Oh, wow. Very cool. And they have uh, my, May, my um, cosplaying cover. Oh, okay. Um, and they are all. With very little clothing. Wow. Well, well that's what Vampirella wore. Yeah, it is. Uh, back again. Back in. Uh, like you said, how do you. How do you. How, <laughs> how does do you that walk stand? around like that? Back, I mean, in, I don't back in the day. Tape. Something. We've got. It's got to be. They, you, they have tricks. We had know? a. We had. I have a whole segment of. Uh, of um i guess they would i don't think they were called cosplaying back in the 90s no i don't I, think so but that's basically what they were they were dressed as characters but they were uh females that uh i had them all say um their name and then you're watching comics tv and i edited it all together and <laughs> so it's different ones like i'm vampirella i'm this i'm that and you're watching comics tv yes and very creative i was and uh, anyhow uh vampirella was one of them yes i'm vampirella <laughs> But uh, yeah, there were a few a uh, few um, people that played Vampirella. In fact, remember we went to the comic book store and I found an old Vampirella comic with a, oh, a trading nice. card in it with that woman that played uh, uh, that character. Oh, that, that was time. at the mm -hmm. at the con. Oh, yeah, okay, that. interesting. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, actually, yes. The uh, Mai is wearing even less than Vampirella. Yeah, <laughs> that's my point. She's like, basically wearing it has a to bikini, be, like clipped or I mean, not it's very clipped, tight. Uh, uh, Maybe. I want to say glue, but I'm meaning tape. There we yeah. go. <laughs> but yeah, this was, uh, so this is pretty cool. If you, uh, again, if you want to celebrate Black History Month a little bit more and you love Vampirill, it's a good, uh, good way to do it. All right. Um, also quickly want to mention that I finished reading uh, God Puncher, uh, all five issues from Lane Lloyd. And it's a cool story. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. Um, liked it. Like his art a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, like he saw the movie Knives Out, and he came home and, and drew a picture with 
you know, a character with knives and everything. It's just. Oh, really? Yeah. That it, awesome. sounds awesome. I love his art style. I wish yeah. I could draw like that. It's just this very cool, yeah. exaggerated style. And I, I like it. I love it. Cool. Um, you can draw inspiration from it. I can, but I can't draw as good. So <laughs> it's going to take me practice. years and years. You know, I, I was thinking. Do you think of, that he just came out of the womb drawing that? Like I'm that. pretty sure he did. So I was, <laughs> I was thinking today that um, of taking a, a, a picture of that. Uh, I showed you that bridge I have that I drew when I was in high school. I was uh -huh. in like 10th grade. Yeah. Um, with tons of detail. And I was going to post it and say, see, you know, at one time I had the ability to sit and draw for yeah. hours and hours. Yeah. And I don't know how good my skill was. It was pretty good. But, uh, you know, I just had a teacher that ruined it for me. And yeah. I, I haven't drawn in 30 years, more than that, like 40 years. So this is, uh, I mean, I did a few things before. I did some stuff for kids on the walls and stuff. But that's not the Yeah, same. you painted this huge it's mural. Not, it's not that <clears throat> I know it's not. All right. So anyhow, let's get to this week's book. What do we have, Parker? This week we read mm -hmm. Blue Hand Mojo, Hard Times Road. By John Jennings. Yes, 1931. Bronzeville, Chicago. The mage Frank Halfdead Johnson is a marked man. Literally. A drunken decision fueled by tragedy has left him with a with half a soul, sorcerous powers, and two centuries to work off his debt to Scratch, a.k.a. the devil himself. This graphic novel chronicles three adventures with this tragic conjure man. Watch as Half Dead attempts to save his own soul, pay his debt, and help as many people as he can along the way. It's a hard-hitting hoodoo noir hairball. Highball. Whoops. <laughs> no, hairball. Ha no hairballs. <laughs> that I remember anyway. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Wait, was there a cat there? Was there a cat? I don't know. Anyhow, no hairballs. No hairballs. Uh, with just a splash of Southern Gothic. Smack dab in the dark heart of the Windy City. Hold on tight. It's going to be a bumpy ride down Hard Times Road. Nice. I'm trying to see around my microphone, so I'm like doing one eye. So no. highball looked like hairball. Wasn't there a one eye? Wasn't there a rapper one eye? Wait, what was her name? What? Yeah, from that group, that three group with Beyonce. Left Eye. Left Eye, oh there we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> one Eye, Left Eye. With Beyonce. That's not Beyonce. Okay. That's Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child. Okay, Left Eye was in TLC. It's not TLC. Okay. T-Boz, Left Eye, Chili. TLC, okay. All right, anyhow. They are two completely different yeah, groups. Okay. They're all they're all the same. I don't know anything no, about it. No, they any aren't. Thing. Oh, my God, that is terrible that well, you think that I they're I just the mean that I don't fact, know any of them. the one that's... Is she dead? One of them's dead. Well, I know that. Let's not talk about that. Okay. All right. That's really sad. The bio of John Jennings. Mr. Jennings is an associate professor of art and visual studies at the University of Buffalo whoop, State whoop. University of New York. His work centers around the intersectional narratives regarding identity politics and popular media. Jennings is co-editor of the Eisner Award nominated collection, The Black the Black or the Ink, Constructions of Black Identity in Comics and Sequential Art, and co-founder, organizer of the Schomburg Center's Black Comic Book Festival in Harlem. He is co-founder and organizer of the MLK NorCal's Black Comics Arts Festival in San Francisco, and also SolCon, SolCon, um, the Brown and Black Comics Expo at the Ohio State University. Jennings is currently a Nazar Jones Hip Hop Studies Fellow with the Hutchins Center at Harvard University. Wow. Jennings' current comics projects include the Hip Hop Adventure comic Kid Zone, Channel Zero, the Supernatural Crime Noir Story, Blue Hand Mojo, and the upcoming gravel, graphic novel adaptation of Octavia Butler's classic dark fantasy novel, Kindred. Really? Oh, I didn't know. You know, know that. Octavia Bus Yeah, I read uh, Fledgling. Oh, so is Kindred one of those? Is it, Was that a witch or something? What was that? Uh, fledgling was vampires. Vampires. Oh, yeah. so Kindred has to be another one. Of them. Yeah, I'm guessing. Oh. Uh, that's, that's only Octavia Butler that I've read. Oh, but, okay. But I it really enjoyed the book. So. Okay, cool. All right. So so uh, this this gentleman is all over. Um, I mean, he's from Mississippi. Uh, I believe he got his arts degree in, in uh, Chicago area, which is why he, uh, I think, why he likes to center this character in there. He, he must have liked the Chicago area. Uh, yeah. And he's in Buffalo now, which is very cool. Yeah. Uh, we didn't even know that until today when I was uh, checking on his bio. Yeah. 
Uh, but look at, and uh, he, he's got stuff going on in Buffalo. He's got stuff going on in Ohio, in uh, California, Harlem. Um, he's, he's doing the work. He's really trying to to get people to to. The, uh, you were reading some of the article mm-hmm. about him from UB, right? And he's trying to get people to realize students to realize that comics is like a real art form, uh-huh. and that uh, you know you can do things with it a lot, right? Um, and this this book. Is very cool. So basically, you've got um, what's his name? Frank. Half dead. Half dead. Yep. And and he's got these powers that he has. Uh, his girlfriend has to make uh, this potion that he can drink that gives him this like supernatural power. Mm-hmm. But in turn, she takes some blood from him to mix her own concoction, so she can become a white person, so she can have a better job. Yep. And. Um, Probably a job at all, really. Oh, uh, you're right, because this is what 1931. Yeah, middle. Yeah, 31. Middle of prohibition. No, prohibition's just over, but it's the Capone era in in uh uh-huh. in uh, the Chicago area. Yeah, and uh, you started reading it. And you're like, I no wonder you like this. It's mafia. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, I just. But it's really. I mean, it's not. It is a little bit, it but is, it's yes. not. As focused on it as I, right. you know, you see Capone and you're like, oh, exactly. okay, it's a mafia story. I mean, not that that's bad, no, but I know it's just, I, I, I understood what your draw to it was, but that wasn't it. But that was, it doesn't focus on that. But that, that wasn't that even, much. that wasn't even why I picked it. It was like, I was looking for some black creators that we didn't know. Uh-huh. And I found that and I found it on Hoopla. We, we yeah. did that on, uh, got that off of Hoopla. And what an amazing choice you made. Yes. It was very it was cool. Great. Um, his style is very, very cool. Yes. Um, I love his art. I did too. Um, I mean, just looking at the front cover, I, you get drawn in, which. Yes. I mean, that's we talk about it a lot, I feel like. You, if you can look at the front cover and go, okay, I want to read this. You know, it, you hope that that it does, you know, don't judge a book by its cover, right? But Yeah, but sometimes you do. And it's it's this very. <laughs> it's so nice when it just goes, oh. It's, it's not a realistic style. But no. it's it's not. It a, is a little bit though. Well, yes, they look like people and stuff, but it's it's a different style. It's yeah. kind of it, well, Sketchy. it's it's we cr- yes, kind of it's the crime noir. You know the the stuff from uh-huh. the thirties, forties, fifties. It's that yep. that that crime drama, that dark crime that a lot of a lot of people. I love that stuff. I uh-huh. I love that. Yeah. That and I think that's when I started reading it. And I'm like, oh, it's uh, it's mafia. Plus it's. Plus, it's that kind of style. I'm like, yeah, very cool. Yeah. But yeah, yes, the cover, and what it is, it's it's that's part of what it is. His his lines are not like really rounded and curved. It's like a little boxy. Mm-hmm. It's Absolutely. Kind of, and it's yeah. kind of like that. And it's very very cool style. Um, and if you've never read anything on Hoopla, it's it's awesome to read on there. Um, it's a black and white book. Um, and it's, you know, you you. Basically, the story is he's got uh, this guy comes to him, a mob guy, who says, uh, I've got a problem. I need your help. Has something to do with this, you know, this hoodoo stuff. And A mob guy, but somebody who. Um, they were working together. They were kind of. They used to work together. They yeah. used to. Yeah. Well, but the story starts out with the how he lost his family, right? Is that how? With the lynchings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. it's it's it starts out dark. Yeah, it is. It's very dark. It's it's that, and um, and they use the n word. Uh, the people do. Uh, and he can use it, which is fine. Frank can use it, but the white guy uses it one too many times. And Frank, did he smack him? I don't remember. I don't know if he smacks, smacks him, but he but threatens he, him. He if definitely he, says. If you do no, it that's again, that's not your word. Yeah, it's not your word. And if you do it again, honestly, he was probably nicer than he needed to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is not this is not a a, a G rated book. No, it's not. There's um, sex in it too. Yes, there is some sex, but it's uh, uh, it, it's good. Uh, I mean, just the oh, that's right, he's dreaming. That's what it was. He was dreaming uh-huh. about about his family. But that gave you the background, yes. so that you could understand mm-hmm. what what uh, where it came, where all of it came from, really, where right. he came from. Right. So then you find out and you slowly learn a little bit of the uh, the story of how he got his powers. But uh, I don't know if it's good. Yeah, powers. it's not like introduced right, right. away. You know, you learn. You no, know he's little got piece. it. But, well, right. But, but you, you don't know find why. out these. I, I really love that when it just keeps you digging around. You know, you just want to turn the page. You want to turn the page and see. What, yep. Okay. Okay. So we got this little piece. Oh, and mm-hmm. then by the end, you've got it all put together. Yes. But you're like wondering, it's like, okay, so he's got like this deal, uh-huh. you know, and you find out early on that he's got this, uh, 
like his girlfriend, what she does and stuff. Uh, right, with right. The, that she's helpful, that she needs that, and and she needs him as much as he needs her because she's the one who can make the potion for him, but she needs his blood too. Right. So they work together well, um, but they have to. They need each other. But they love each other, I think. I think so too. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so this mob guy comes and he's like, I need your help. Some, some, you know, some. Uh, something happened. Something happened. And they take Can't even him- put put the words on it yeah. but something happened and slowly the story unfolds <laughs> um and it takes a while it takes a while till you get the whole story but you get the story and and it's good um you know i don't want to give a lot away i know it's really we always kind of try and yeah I, you know i don't want to give a lot away but no, i mean but there's good. there's violence there's yeah. there's it's gory there's some gory uh there's there's like a supernatural stuff in it there yeah. is um Magic, I guess, uh, you know, hoodoo. Uh, hoodoo, yeah, magic, and um, you know, you get the the white guys who um, the Guidos. D- doesn't he say Guidos at one point? Guidos. Does, does he call them Guidos? Somebody does. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you get the the mob guys, and then you get these these old fuck uh, rednecks who make uh, making moonshine and um, oh uh, yeah, out out in the woods, you know, and then they come and they're like. Yeah, you know, uh, so the black guys are the ones picking it up. Uh-huh. And they're like, you know what? We think Capone's making too much money. We want twice as much. So um, Frank and his people uh, end up killing them and say, we're going to just take it for free. Yeah, now it's ours. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so uh, and he uses his magic to do it, to, to start it out. Yeah. He has the one guy beat his uh, beat his own family to death. Oh, that's right. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. But uh, so it does get pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good. It's like he didn't do it. He made them do it to themselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's, you know, so Frank unfortunately gets involved in this, this because this guy knows him and, and Frank is really the only one that could, could uh, fight this, this supernatural being. Yeah. Um, he's really the only one that could do it. And it's, and at times he gets pulled in to basically to the devil. And mm-hmm. he's like, he's like within inches and she's beautiful and she's calling to him. It's like, come on, you know, it's time, Frank, you know, come. And he wants to go because it would be so much easier just to let go. Yeah. Uh, but he realizes he's, he's not ready for that. He yet. still has work to do. Yep. Yeah. And that's the thing uh, that, that constantly want they well, that wasn't the devil, though. It was. It's something that would take him. There. Scratch was the devil. Well, yeah, but would who? Who's she then? Uh, she's like a in goddess, be, I think. In between, though, she would yes. bring him to the devil, basically. And he could travel through her too. Oh, remember? Yeah, that's right. He can like jump, like time jump, kind of. Yeah, I wonder because um, remember he took somebody else, and he said, "I'm not going to tell her the price that she's paying for this, you know, to oh. pass through." Mm-hmm. So I wonder what that price would have been. Well, there, there's, and that you there's don't, always something. Yes, there's always something, but I wonder what it was because she didn't, you know, she didn't give consent to that. Well, so I wonder. Maybe he'd pay I for it. Know. I mean, uh, maybe because the scratch always wants more souls. That's and that's part of what Frank. Well, gave is that up. what it is? Did he have to give up? Is that what he, she had to give up her soul in order to go see her? <clears throat> is, um, should I, we should probably shouldn't give that part away, but in order to travel through the time, yeah, she, I don't know. did she have to give her soul? And can you take somebody's soul without them consenting to it? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if you're bad, you can. But she wasn't bad. No, she didn't. Well, she, she did. did do something bad, though. Yeah. So, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it it's... Uh, I really like the book. Yeah, the so, details. The Yes, the, the, there's a lot of text. Um, more text than, than usual. Cause yeah. Because there's sometimes there's like narration on the side. Uh-huh. Plus um, the, bu- the thought bubbles and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Plus, plus that. Or speaking bubbles. So I wanted to I wanted to go back. So uh, uh, John Jennings is a, a pro- professor, art professor at UB. Uh-huh. And... Um, they have, they have an interesting, UB is an interesting place. They have a lot of different things. One of my, uh, when I owned Zippy Delivery, one of my messengers was a poet, uh, uh, poetry graduate student or something. I forgot what he was, but apparently UB has this huge collection. One of the biggest collections of poetry in the country. Really? Yeah. And people come from all over to go there to study. Was that your messenger that was from out here? 
No, but he did. He ended up staying there. He was still there last last I had, oh. I had, so I don't remember what his name was. But no, he was. Oh, you don't remember? He was from somewhere else, and he went to Buffalo specifically for that. Not the one that came to our wedding. I don't know who that was. Oh, not the, Justin. Okay, not Justin. No, not not Justin. Kenny. I don't know who Kenny is. Kenny was he? Uh, I think he was from Oregon before. Oh no 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 no. Okay. No no he's 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 in Oregon again. Is he? He back? was in the okay. Navy or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, he yeah, was, yeah. but he's yes, he lives in Oregon, down okay. in Portland. That's something. the only person I could think. Maybe it was yeah. before me. It Maybe must, it must because those were those early. were your two long term people yeah. when, when when I was with you. Yeah, I don't think he stick, stuck around real long. Oh, but okay. makes sense why you didn't remember his name then. Yeah, I, and I could find it. I'm sure if I tried. But uh, so I was reading an article that uh, it's called the uh, the soul. It's from it's from the University of Buffalo. They did a, an article on John Jennings, um, and. They said that uh, he uh, he centers his life on provocative questions. How can we show the work of unre- under underrepresented artists, especially those who do comics? How can we go beyond the racial stereotype of traditional comic art to show the rich expression of black artists, past and present? And 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 during the and this, how can we help UB students see that creating art is a possibility for them? Um, but reading the article. He said that, like a lot of people, with a lot of things, when he was young, he was into comics, and then it kind of like fell. It was probably one of those things where it fell to the side, probably because comics aren't cool, uh-huh. you know. Uh, but he he put picked him up again. Um, grew up in rural Mississippi, and um, well, probably not that they weren't cool, but that there was there wasn't maybe there wasn't he couldn't see a future with them or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, probably. Um, he started to, to get into different things. Uh, we mentioned that he was involved in some hip hop thing in, in Harlem too. Mm-hmm. Um, he he started looking into the hip hop culture and and all these different things. And one of the things he was talking about was uh, how uh, look, 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 pulse of the hip hop culture. He has his finger on the pulse of the hip-hop comp culture, not with the detachment of an academic researcher studying the phenomenon phenana- nam from afar, but with the passion of an artist who understands hip-hop's compelling meaning culturally. And um, he said that there's like there's four elements that he sees. There's graffiti, DJing, MCing, or rap, and breakdancing, or b-boying. And those are all different types of, of the hip-hop culture. Hmm. And he says, probably white people especially, like, don't really know the difference. He says, and a lot of people don't see the difference, really. Mm-hmm. But um, he says, hip hop is a tre- tre- treasure trove of both street meanings and scholarly insights. It encompasses everything from activism and aesthetics to mm-hmm. identity politics, politics and hip hop as an industry. So, I mean, he said that, like, when he created this character, Frank, um, he was looking at comics and he's looking at black characters and it's like all the black characters are like big, strong, hyper masculine. Yeah. Yes. And there were not a lot that like had supernatural powers or anything like that. So he wanted to do something that mm-hmm. was different. He still wanted black characters, powerful black characters, but yeah. in a different way, they don't yeah. have to be just big muscular guys to, yeah. to do that. Um, and that's, uh, that's very cool. Um, so I I I um I liked the book. It was it was good. I it, loved it. It was uh, I loved yes, it. it was really good. I, I wasn't sure. I didn't I honestly didn't want to put it down. And and when you first you sent me a text, you're like, I know why you like this. Okay, my- see, no. you're reading my tone through text. I that is not how I said it at all. I just said, Oh, I know why you like this because it's because I saw Capone and so I went, uh-huh. Oh, it has a mafia thing. Mm-hmm. And that component. wasn't and that was I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that until I started reading it. Oh, I had, oh, I yeah. had no idea. It was just right. like John Jennings. Okay, I found it on Hoopla. Okay, cool. Let's read this. Yeah. And I started reading it. I'm like, interesting. And then the more you get into it, I'm like, okay, this is a cool story. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it it was uh, it was it was a good story too. It was it was a good story from beginning to end. Uh, you know, um, he put together a great you know a great story. He he does some uh, some different work with the uh, like layouts on pages and stuff. So they're not all identical. It's not like every page is oh, exactly yeah. the same. Absolutely, yeah. I like he does that different things like the panels. Sometimes there's a bunch of panels on one page with the, a, with a ton of you know with a ton of uh, 
Yeah, and some there's a like a background, and then the panels are on top of that. Yeah, yeah, that's one really like cool. this where the picture uh-huh. runs out of the panel. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, there's a page I'm looking at that's the exact same thing. There's a gun that has a smoking gun falling in the background, and then the there's four panels going down the page. So yeah, it's yeah. it's uh, I his artwork is yeah. amazing, yeah. amazing. It does does a, a really good artwork, black and white, and it's very dark. It is crime noir, so it it really uh-huh. fits this this dark style like this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he really knows how. There's just on this one page, you've got a, a thought bubble or a, a thought balloon or not even a thought balloon. It's actually a word balloon, like the speech bubble. Speech bubble that pops out of the out of the panels, but then there's also like this dark cloud popping mm. out of one panel, and yeah. then this uh, magic popping out of another, all on the same page. It's, uh-huh. it's he does this this great, just great, you know, layout uh, of the comics, and the, and like you said, the art is amazing, right? Uh, so it was it was a really good pick for this this week. Absolutely. Um, yeah. John Jennings, the Blue Hand Mojo, Hard Times Road, definitely worth uh, checking out. Uh, it's not brand new. Twenty sixteen, you said. Twenty fifteen, I think. Twenty fifteen, I thought you said twenty sixteen. Oh, but on Amazon, uh, Amazonian that, that place, <laughs> the you buy things that I just pulled up. Uh, twenty. It, oh, the paperback came out March twenty seventeen. Oh, in 2017. So the hardcover yeah. must have been on people. With it. So in 2017. Okay. So, uh, uh, but it's good. It doesn't even have it, though. It says uh, Kindle and Comixology. That's oh, yeah. something new, huh? No. No? No. That's old. They don't. I think I'm, Amazon owns that, too. They you didn't can, originally. You, you can, no, they didn't. You can read comics on there. I see that. Or you can go, <clears throat> you can get brand new. Like when they come out on Tuesday, you can get your brand new comics right away on there. Right. Uh, or you can just wait and pick them up on Hoopla for free through there your you library. Go. Or you can buy it because we yes we recommend you buy it. recommend you buy it fourteen ninety five paperback on this platform or you can probably <laughs> go to uh, go directly to his website. Do we have that? Can we pull it up? Let's see. I don't know. We probably, obviously. And does he have any social media that we could suggest I, I, that they I, follow him? I on? haven't even got to that point yet. Oh, okay. But I don't know. We'll have to tell me. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna look for it. Yeah, I, I'm, you know. Okay. Anything else this week? I uh, I don't think Rosarium Publishing is. Originally published August 2016. You're right, 2016. Yeah, so I think. Yep, you can pick it up. Oh, only $1.99 for shipping. Go to go to, go to rosarium.bookstore.ipgbook. Um, Com. You can probably just search it. Just search it on, on one of your search engines and it'll come up. And um, 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 price, where is it? Oh, you can get it for an ebook PDF for $1.99. Okay, now I don't know if he's still at UB. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. I don't know if he's still at UB because I see it says Riverside, California. Oh, really? Yeah. This so. was the other uh, blue hand. I want to read that one too. Oh, the other one. The other one. The other one. The comic only 32 pages oh yep i think he has moved on from ub wow yeah it looks like he it says ucr professor of media and cultural studies so well it was cool that he was at buffalo absolutely but uh yeah looks it's like always it, funny to see those connections yeah it looks happen. like he's moved on john ira jennings all right cool all right check blue hand mojo out until next week when we're going to have another book I believe next week we're going to be reading March by John Lewis. Yes. That's an important, right. important book. So if you want to get that read and then listen to yeah. our episode next week. Yeah, we're just going to do book one. It's three volumes and we're just we're going to do book one only. But uh, it's a good start. All right. Until next week, I'm Mike. And I'm Parker. And this is the, the Graphic, Graphic Novel, Novel Podcast. Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Graphic Novel Podcast. Make sure you find us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter at Graphic Novel Pod. Uh, the other places, I think it's Graphic Novel Podcast, but it's Graphic Novel Pod on Twitter. Um, I was surprised I remember that much. So I know, because you know what? I would happy. not have remembered that. It was, <laughs> was good. And if you like the show, please go to your favorite store that you listen to podcasts. And uh, at least give us a five star 
or if you have the time, leave a review. Um, you can send us an email at graphicnovelpodcast at gmail.com. Tell your friends about us. Definitely tell your friends about us. Uh, check us out. You know, uh, visit us on social media on Twitter. That's that's where uh, I am the most. It's on Twitter. Uh, I try to avoid Facebook at all costs. Um, and you can also, if you go to anchor.fm and slash graphic novel podcast, you can go to our site and you can leave us a voice message. And if you leave us a nice message, maybe we'll play it on the air. Is that it? Nothing else? You don't want to say anything else? Nope. Good for you, Krabby Duck.